Hi, everybody. I'm very happy to welcome you here. My name is Amanda Anderson. I'm the director of the Kogut Institute for the Humanities, and really delighted to just be saying a few words of introduction this morning before turning things over to our real introducers, um, Claire Brawl and Iris Montero. So this conference was the result of a lot of hard work and some really rewarding collaborations here at Brown. First of all, I want to thank the Center for Contemporary South Asia at the Watson Institute, and particularly its interim director, Leela Gandhi, for partnering on the lecture that Amitav Ghosh will give this afternoon at 4 p.m., which is not only a featured event of this conference, but also the first of two events that Amitav will be doing as CCSA's O.P. Jindal Distinguished Lecturer. The next event is Friday the 13th at 2 p.m. here, where he will be in conversation with Leela Gandhi. So I invite everybody to that event as well. Secondly, I want to draw your attention to the fact that our program is part of a larger series of events ongoing across the campus focusing on the environment and climate change. There are concurrent events at the David Winton Bell Gallery, the Brown Arts Initiative, the Institute at Brown for Environment and Society, and the John Carter Brown Library. And if you're interested, but you shouldn't be too interested because I don't want you leaving here to go to the, their events, <laughs> uh, there is a poster right to the left of the uh, water fountains. Lastly, I want to thank the Kogut staff. Well, this isn't really lastly. I don't know why lastly is so early in my draft. Um, I want to thank the Kogut staff for its meticulous attention to everything behind the scenes that ensures that an event such as this comes to fruition um, in a delightfully uneventful way. So I thank Kit Salisbury, Damien Maillet, Trouda Kastner, and Melissa Shine. The introducers for the conference are also its catalyzing organizers. Claire and Iris are both Mellon postdoctoral fellows at the Kogut Institute. Claire is a political theorist working in environmental politics, and Iris is an historian of early modern science. Claire approached me about possibly doing a series in environmental humanities, and over a series of meetings and collaborations, the idea for a year-long series of events culminating in this conference took shape. And I just want to say that one of the real rewards of my position is having incredibly proactive, um, energetic, resourceful, brilliant postdocs who come to me with um, programming ideas. And it's, it's astonishing because, you know, they're hard at work finishing books, teaching, with uh, some degree of institutional insecurity, and yet they do donate all this time and energy to uh, Brown and to the Institute. So it's really, it's really amazing, and I really applaud them. The series that we uh, worked up included talks by Terry Tempest Williams, a roundtable featuring climate change writers for a more popular audience, which Iris spearheaded, and other events keyed to our series, Politics in the Humanities. And there are other events as well, which I think um, Iris will tell you about. Claire's extraordinary leadership and the knowledge, energy, attentiveness, and labor that both Claire and Iris brought to this project have been absolutely vital. I also want to thank Sharon Krause, professor of political science and speaking in the first panel, for joining the organizing committee and for providing invaluable input and guidance. It's been an unalloyed pleasure to work with Claire, Iris, Sharon, and the other member of our team, Kogut's associate director, director Damien Maillet, on this conference. Now, uh, before I turn things over to Claire and Iris, I want to say just a few things about um, our introducers in terms of their own work, um, because I think they're both amazing scholars, and it's important that you be aware of that background as well. So Claire earned her BA and her MA in Law and Political Studies from the University of Rennes in Brittany, France, and then completed a PhD in political science at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Her work draws from a number of disciplines and interdisciplinary fields, environmental political theory, feminist theory, feminist science and technology studies, eco-criticism, etc. 
In her book project, she examines temporality and the current ecological crisis, studying a variety of texts from environmental science fiction to contemporary dance and circus, as well as climate science. She argues that capitalist temporalities, though often contradictory, acceleration, continuous progress, crisis, share a utopian or uchronian dimension as they constantly postpone the good time of endless abundance to an actually impossible future, given our planet's limited resources. She proposes to go beyond utopia by showing the dangerous and destructive utopian quality of capitalist times, and by asking what alternative eco-temporalities are possible or already in existence. Claire is also working on several other projects, if that one isn't ambitious enough, including an essay on Nietzsche's conception of re eternal return in relation to ecological questions and a feminist critique of geoengineering schemes purporting to address the climate crisis. Iris Montero is an historian of early modern science and medicine working on European, Latin American, and indigenous traditions of natural knowledge production. And I should also mention that last year, Iris was instrumental in organizing a conference on indigenous knowledges from the South, Global South, which was amazing. She received her PhD in the history and philosophy of science from the University of Cambridge, where she was the first Mexican recipient of a Gates scholarship for doctoral work in the humanities. Her current book project, What the Hummingbird Knows, centers the elasticity of the early modern genre of natural history to trace transfers of knowledge between the Americas and Europe. The first iteration of this project received an honorable mention for the Prize for Young Scholars by the International Union of the History and Philosophy of Science for best dissertation on any topic, region, or period for the years 2012 to 2016. A huge honor, but I'm not surprised. Okay, so I will turn things over to Claire and Iris, and they will give you a proper substantial introduction. <laughs> Thank you so much, Amanda, for these amazing introductions. Um, uh, hi, everyone. Very welcome here. Um, I would like to reiterate first um, Amanda's welcome and thanks, um, and insist on thanking the Kogut staff, um, Kit Salisbury, Trouder Kastner, Melissa Shine, and Damien Maillet, and of course, to thank Amanda Anderson herself uh, for sponsoring and organizing the event. This sort of event could not happen without their vision and dedication and in fact, when I first approached Amanda, um, which she was just recounting, about the idea of a series of, lecture, uh, of lectures on environmental humanities, before I knew it, we had a committee together. And the series of lectures that was r relatively modest at the beginning turned into a big series of events culminating with this conference. So this is the kind of vision that carries the Kogut Institute for the Humanities. And we're quite lucky here as postdocs. Um, so we're here with um, two very dense and much needed days to think of and with the environmental humanities. And I would imagine that many in this room would agree with, um, that we are currently going through an unprecedented environmental crisis. And yet, many of us in this room would also agree that we need to ask for whom and to whom this crisis is unprecedented. Whom among the humans? whom beyond just humans. In addition, I'm not sure we should take for granted that this is simply a crisis, as the term crisis connotes something that is meant to pass. Following feminist philosopher of science, Isabel Stangers, I think we may rather speak of a catastrophe. I'm doing the more pessimistic part of our introductory <laughs> remarks, but Iris will do the more hopeful part. <laughs> Just wanted to not, you know, get everybody so depressed from the start. So I should say that. <laughs> um, so due to this irreme irremediable character of the situation, I would also follow Stanger's insights that I, um, that I quote, it is not in the least bit ensured that the sciences, such as we know them at least, are equipped to respond to the threats of the future, end quote. 
Indeed, this is one of the reasons why we need a much more vast approach and why not just the sciences but the humanities also must engage the catastro catastrophic ecological context. Without the critical, theoretical, conceptual, historical perspectives offered by the humanities, if the cat catastrophic context is left to scientists alone, we may end up with a turn to hubristic measures such as geoengineering as the supposed responses. The stakes are high, therefore, for a dialogue between disciplines and for ethical, philosophical, and political debate, richly nourished by the humanities also. And yet, this ecological catastrophe also puts the humanities once more in a paradoxical situation. Namely, it is in the humanities that we have historically found the most vibrant questioning of who and what gets to count as human, and how we might conceptualize nature. In particular, feminist and post-colonial approaches have long investigated these questions, and the works represented in this conference very much reflects this. And yet, the heightened need for, of taking that which is more, more, much beyond the human into account gets at the always already shaking and fragile, contestable foundation of the humanities. Thus, we look forward to the discussions of the next two days with these high stakes in mind. It's clear that the task at hand is very pressing. So in the interest of time, I will just like to add a couple of points to those that Claire has already made. First, that I too believe that the humanities have a unique contribution to make as we imagine shared futures on the planet that it is as critical for us as humanists to determine what role we can play in this reimagining, and that as it is for humans to reconnect with the more than human. For me personally, looking at the relationship between humans and animals in different historical and cultural contexts has provided valuable guideposts. I am sure equivalents to this experience are shared by most participants in this weekend's journey whether in the Indian Ocean, New England, or Latin America, in the sea, the desert, or Arctic ice, thinking with tortoises, forests, lichens, or wonder-producing birds, we have all had insights that have been at once alarming and hopeful. It is in the coming together, though, that we can start creating a mosaic that can further illuminate the path ahead in this momentous time. And that brings me to my second point. The planning and execution of this series over the course of the year has been exemplary of the kind of collaborative and intellectually challenging and engaging environment that the humanities create together. Just to give you a few more snippets of what, what we have um, experienced this year as we think along environmental humanities, um, we kicked off with a, a, an event organized by, by Claire uh, with environmental historian Edward Melillo talking about insects and the making of the modern world. Um, this fall, we also had a very um, inspiring projection of the documentary on the life of Lynn Margulis' symbiotic earth. And later, as Amanda mentioned, we had an afternoon thinking with um, public scholars, writers, um, environmental writers who have devoted to write for the larger public um, on these pressing matters. So this is just a few, these are just a few samples of what the Kogut Institute under Amanda's direction has meant for us. It is fair to say that this kind of meeting under the auspices of a university-wide project on the environment could not take place anywhere else. And it has been a pleasure to be part of it. With that, let us then now turn to our earthly matters, shall we? Let us start by welcoming Tamara Chin who will moderate the first panel of the day and help us start thinking beyond the human. Thank you very much.